everybody. Here we are once again. It's time for our encouraging words together. A chance for us to come before the Lord, to bring him the concerns of our heart, to take a moment and reflect on his word, to rehearse in our hearts and minds his truth, his word to us, and then find as we believe it and put it into practice that his peace, his goodness, his love and more comes to fill our hearts as we draw close to the Lord, as we look to him as the source and strength of our life, as we look to the Father God as Father and Jesus as our Lord and Savior, as we depend on the Holy Spirit for daily living, there is always hope to be found in the Lord. Thanks for tuning in today. I wanted to share today from the book of Psalms, Psalm 19 and verse 14, where the psalmist, in this case, King David, he says, May these words of my mouth and this meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, Lord, my rock and my redeemer. David wanted to make sure that the things that he meditated on, the things that he rehearsed in his heart and mind day in and day out, day out would be that which honors God, that speaks and declares his goodness because he's looking for the Lord to be a rock, a place of stability, a foundation upon which he can build his life and find enduring success and hope and peace and joy and all that comes with that. So he, David wants to make sure the meditations of his heart and the things he rehearses and meditates on, focuses on with his mind, are that which honors God. Now that's an important principle. When I was growing up as a boy in church, my boyhood pastor used to say, your attitude determines your altitude. You might have heard that phrase before. And there's a sense in which if we are carrying a certain attitude, it'll affect us emotionally. It'll affect our outlook. It'll affect many times the degree of success as we engage the world around us. Our attitude affects our altitude. When we're pessimistic, uh, when we are filled with cynicism, when our attitude is negative, we tend to be downcast. We tend to give up hope. We tend to lose faith. We tend to become suspicious. There are all kinds of negative things that happen when we harbor negative feelings and carry a bad attitude. On the other hand, when we choose to be gracious, when we give people the benefit of the doubt, when we choose to find the humor in every situation, when we, we um, walk humbly before God and before people, when we tend to look on the bright side of things. It doesn't mean we stick our heads in the sand when things are hard, but we look for the broader perspective. It's then that we find that there can be an enduring joy. When we remember that we're not meant to muddle through life on our own, but that we have a Heavenly Father who loves us, who, who has sent His Son to give His life for our sins, that we might know resurrection life, both this side of Heaven's door and the other side as we enter into eternity. As we trust in the Spirit of God who abides with us and fills us with confidence. In all these things, there is a reason and really an opportunity to find peace. And so David, he comes before the Lord and he says, I want my words to be that which please you. I want the things I meditate on to, uh, to be that which pleases you, God. Of course, David's not just talking randomly. This verse, Psalm 19, verse 14, comes at to the very end of this psalm. You know, the psalms have, um, have a purpose that purpose is to capture emotion and bring it before the Lord. Psalms are not primarily designed to teach, though we can certainly learn things from them. They're designed to be opportunities of, um, of, of worship where we bring our emotions before the Lord. And because of that, we have all kinds of psalms. We have psalms of praise. We have psalms of thanksgiving. We have royal psalms that are songs that celebrate the king. We have liturgical songs, uh, psalms that were used in formal worship. We have um, psalms of lament or petition, where we bring our needs and the burdens of our heart before the Lord. There are penitential psalms where we express sorrow and ask for forgiveness over sin. 
There are even imprecatory psalms. That's not a word we use every day, but that's the kind of psalm where we're so frustrated by our enemy that we say, God, take him out. Isn't that a scary kind of prayer? And yet the idea is we're trusting God to act justly and to do the right thing. Really, it's a cry, God, bring your justice. But there's also a kind of psalm that we call a confidence psalm. Sometimes they're called wisdom psalms. And these are the psalms that make declarative statements about God and the kind of God he is, that remind us of his faithfulness, that rehearse his goodness. And that's what Psalm 19 is. It's a confidence psalm. When you read through that psalm, you'll see that David writes things like this, Lord, the heavens declare your glory. In the first six verses, David will talk about everywhere he looks, he finds evidence of the goodness and glory of God. That psalm will go on to say about how the law of God, all his commands, how they're perfect, how his precepts are are right and that they can bring joy to every heart when we put our trust in him and obey those precepts and follow through on them. He says um, things like, um, Lord, your decrees are more precious than gold. David's finding delight in the truths and commands of God's word. And so Psalm 19 expresses all these things about who God is and about the power of his word. They're all these declarative statements. And then he caps it off with the verse we read. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be pleasing in your sight. What words? What meditations? Well, the ones he's just written. The first 13 verses. The ones that have become determined to declare the good news about God, his character, his righteousness, his holiness, the power of his word. Why would David do that? Well, I think for lots of reasons. You know, life often brings us situations in seasons where God's glory might be hard to see, where his word could feel more like a burden than an opportunity. That's because we're human and we're frail and we're fickle and we're emotionally feeble. We need the Lord. Our emotions will lead us astray. And so David confronts that by making this confession to the Lord, by making defining statements, declarative statements about who he really is, the Lord, who he really is, and what his word is really like. And then he says, so now may what I've just said be pleasing to you, Lord. I want this to be my focus, not my experience, not my history, not my problems, not my complaints. I'm not hiding from them, but I am looking for a truth that's greater than them. And these truths are true eternally. Your heavens do declare your glory. Your precepts are right. Your law is good. And as he confesses that, as he declares that, he's reminding his own spirit so that his attitude would not be one of pessimism or complaint or heartbreak, but one of confidence before the Lord. It's a confident song. May we join our prayer along with David that our words, and the meditations of our heart would please him before the Lord. And as we do that, we'll discover he indeed is our rock. He is our redeemer. In other words, he's the one who brings stability and strength to our lives. He's the one that sets things right in the end. He redeems us. He calls us to himself that we might know him as father, that we might embrace Jesus as Lord, that we might live by the presence and words of the Holy Spirit revealed through the scripture and dwelling in us. And as we do, and as we meditate and rehearse and declare the goodness of God, as we express words of confidence like Psalm 19 and meditate on them, there is a strength and an encouragement that comes to our heart. So my hope for us all, let's confess the goodness of God. Let's declare the goodness of his word. Let's put our hope in him and what he tells us through the scripture. As we trust him, he will be our rock and our redeemer. With that thought, let's pray. Lord, I thank you that you are faithful, that you are strong, and that you are mighty. And just as David chose, Lord, to declare your goodness and express confidence in you, may that also be the meditation of our heart. 
May we rehearse the many times you've been faithful. May we call to mind exactly what your character is and how you are eternally good and faithful and loving and kind and compassionate. Lord, may we not um, distance ourselves from your word or ignore it, but may we embrace it and, and center our hearts and lives and actions around the truths of your word. May we delight in your word, even as David did. And I thank you, Lord, that as we do, you indeed bring a strength and a hope that carries us through every difficulty and storm. Thank you, Lord. Work that in us more and more, we pray. Thank you, Lord, that you come by your Spirit to even help us do that. Have your way in us, even right now. Thank you, Lord, for hearing us as we pray. In Christ's name we ask. Amen. Boy, even just talking about the scripture, I experience a lightness of heart. My prayer is that the word has the same impact on you. Together, as we trust the Lord, there is strength being poured out to each and every single one of us. Thanks for tuning in today. Here at Friendship Village, we work hard to show you these videos on channel 900. We do that by showing them three times a day. They're brand new at 4.30. They repeat at 8 o'clock at night and then 8 o'clock again the following morning before the new one kicks in. Uh, but you can also watch these videos anytime, day or night, on YouTube. That's where we store them and link into them to our television system. And so you can go to YouTube yourself, if you like, anytime you want, day or night. Type in Encouraging Words with Burt Campbell. You'll see all our videos there right now. In fact, if you're watching this online, do you know someone who could use some encouragement today? Perhaps consider sending them the link to today's video. You can also click on my face right here to subscribe to these videos when they're brand new and uh, see them show up in uh, your YouTube feed to get those notifications. Or you can click on the box below to see any in our past history. Thanks so much for tuning in today. May the words of our mouth and the meditations of our heart always be pleasing to the Lord. Amen. We'll see you next time.